Hi folks, my name's Ashley. I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you what's new in Construct 3 release 225. As ever, there's absolutely loads of new stuff in this release, but I'm just going to focus on three new things. The first thing is a major new feature we're calling Mesh Distortion. I think this is a really cool feature. Um, basically, this allows you to take an ordinary sprite, as shown by this uh, pig here, that's one sprite, and split it up into a grid um, of points and then these points you can move around independently uh, creating a kind of warping effect so this is uh, you can control all these points at runtime and create really interesting new sort of shapes and animated kinds of effects uh, it's particularly useful for uh, sort of skin or fabric like uh, effects um, that's new for you to try uh, we're going to do more with this feature in subsequent releases we're intending to add an a feature in the editor to control meshes as well and you'll be able to use that with tile backgrounds to uh, set up um, interesting more varied level designs and, and so on. It's not yet available the editing feature in this release but you can use it at runtime and if you search the start page for mesh you can see there's two examples there you can play with and have a look at how to get started with that. Next up uh, in our last release we introduced the uh, scene graph feature and by popular demand in this uh, release we've added uh, a way to set up scene graphs inside the editor itself. Um, so you can see there's uh, no add child events here, there's just a tween animation which runs on start of layout and I've just got a part of a, a skeleton sprite which I want to show you this future with. So if I, if I run this uh, project you can see the skeleton is not connected up uh, each part of the skeleton is working independently and it's not creating the effect we want. Now if I add all these uh, parts of the arm as a child of the uh, previous part that will create a, a scene graph hierarchy and the whole arm will move like we want. And I can now do this in the editor, this is a new feature. So if I select the first two which I want uh, to be the first link in the chain and I right click on the parent sprite and choose hierarchy, add selection to this instance this is now set up in the editor that this sprite is a child of this sprite and you can see the, the green arrow points to show the uh, hierarchy, it points down towards the children so it points down the hierarchy and I can do that again to set up the uh, next part of the hierarchy and again so I'm just adding uh, each sprite as a child of the previous one and finally the sword and now when I preview this project you can see that the scene graph hierarchy has been set up inside the editor and the, we get the effect we want which is a, an arm connected together and moving as one. So that's pretty cool, that's a useful way to set up your uh, scene graph hierarchies more easily in the editor. Previously you'd have needed a lot of add child actions so this helps you get your game working inside the editor without having to use lots of events. Uh, thirdly uh, the third thing I want to show you is in this release we are uh, after a long development period we're finally um, launching the ability to use local file and folder saves in Chrome in the Chrome browser specifically other browsers don't support this yet but if you use Chrome uh, you can now use the save as single file option and this lets you save uh, your file anywhere you want on disk I'm just going to call this test um, and previously if you did that you would have only been able to use download a copy uh, which will just put the file in your downloads folder and now um, to show you how this uh, oh, go away. <laughs> uh, to show you how this um, uh, how it really works why it's convenient is if I now choose open local file I can now open that test file again and I can uh, make a change so say change text and when I press save this now overwrites the file uh, which I opened in the first place so you don't have to sort of juggle download a copy files if I drag and drop that back in you can see it has overwritten the file where I saved it so this makes it a lot easier to work with files wherever you save them on your computer and uh, the other um, new save option is the folder saves if I now go to save as project folder, this is uh, another new option and um, now you can save a project as separate files within an entire folder and you can see there's a permission prompt here, I'm just going to approve and now this has saved the project as lots of individual files inside its own folder. Um, 
When you use a .c3p file, that's actually just a zip file of all these files renamed to .c3p. Um, and this, this just lets you save directly to a folder uh, on your disk. This is great for very large projects which are quicker to save and it's good for other tools like source control uh, because um, your changes will come up as changes in these text files instead of just a single big file which changes. Uh, let me just demonstrate to you how a C3P files are really a folder project if I rename that to .zip and open that you can see inside the zip is the same kind of file structure uh, it's a folder project uh, and you can use this to um, also switch between each format so you can zip a folder project and rename it to .c3p or you can rename a .c3p to .zip and extract all these files and it's a folder project again and then you can use that directly from within the editor. So those are some new uh, saving options um, which you can now make use of in the Chrome browser as I said. As ever there's loads of new uh, stuff uh, other than that, um, lots of changes, bug fixes, other improvements. Uh, take a look through all the release notes and you can find everything that's new uh, since the last release 218. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy this release.